To present our final award of the evening, we welcome one of the most influential and well-respected voices in our food community. She is the author of six prize-winning books, including her most recent Soda Politics, which took home a James Beard Award last May. She continues to shape the next generation of young minds as the Paulette Goddard Professor of Nutrition, Food Studies, and Public Health at New York University. Please welcome Dr. Marion Nestle. <laughs> Nestle, Nestle, let's go with Nestle. I think I nestled your voice or your name, but that's Nestle. A, it's Nestle. It's not. I knew it was Nestle. I just nestled it. So, I'm from Quebec. He's pronouncing it in French. Uh, well, it's an enormous honor and privilege to be uh, doing the last, but definitely not the least, award. Um, and it's my privilege to introduce Raj Patel. I really feel honored to do that. Raj is the uh, is um, uh, academic at the LBJ School of Public Health in Texas. Um, but he came there from a really interesting career working for the World Bank and working for the World Trade Organization where he got to see, and I'm going to start by saying that one of the things he does that nobody else does is he talks, he uses words that nobody else will uh, say in public company and in particular the C word, capitalism. <laughs> Um, so Raj saw capitalism in action at the World Bank and World Trade Organization, realized that this wasn't going to work, and that what he really needed to do was to come out of those institutions and be in a position where he could talk about what capitalism was doing and then try to fix it. And his book, Stuffed and Starved, broke new ground. Um, it's a classic. And it absolutely brought, broke new ground in tying together uh, hunger, world hunger, and also uh, the rising prevalence of obesity, and tying together, tying them together as the consequences of the late stage capitalism in which we live. Uh, his focus is on inequalities and how late stage capitalism develops inequalities. And nobody else talks about this in the same very direct way that he does. If you heard his talk this afternoon, you know that he used words like disgust probably in a way that you haven't seen in most conferences. Um, <laughs> he, um, uh, uh, poop? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Um, he talks about politics, which is something else that people don't like to talk about. He talks about politics and the importance of politics if we want to have a society that has equality and justice. He talks about um, politics if we want to do something to end xenophobia and, our ex and exclusionism. And he talks about politics and using a, a phrase I've never heard before, but I'm going to steal, gastronomical Islamophobia, something that we really all need to be concerned about if we're going to have a better and more peaceful world. Um, for anybody, and you know, regardless of what you think about politics, uh, for anyone who wonders whether Karl Marx had anything to say to current day generations, or for anyone who thinks that uh, Donald Trump is the embodiment of um, Hegel's uh, hastening the dialectic, I never thought I would say this in public. Um, <laughs> The uh, Raj Patel's work makes those kinds of things and brings these connections together and talks about what we have to do as a food movement to try to either fix capitalism and fix the things that are wrong with it um, or try to change the system in ways that are going to be um, more fair and more just and more sustainable for everybody. Um, and his major point, I think, is that we all have to get involved in the messy business of politics. Uh, whether we like it or not, we've got to do it if we're really going to make change in the world. Uh, so that's Raj Patel, and let's have a look at his film. It's my pleasure to present the 2016 James Beard Leadership Award to Raj Patel.
<laughs> Goodness. Uh, thank you, uh, those of you who are sticking around, uh, for having stuck around. Um, I'm going to be so brief, but thank you, Marion. Um, I, th there are four basic groups of people that I want to thank. First of all, the food industry. I'd like to thank Pepsi, Cadbury Schweppes, British American Tobacco, Nestle, uh, the company, um, <laughs> because uh, y'all paid for me to go to school. Uh, because the second group of people I'd like to thank is my parents, in whose convenience store you, the food industry, funded my education. Um, so I, I, I grew up uh, in a convenience store in London um, where you know, I was surrounded by the food industry detritus. You know, it was bad you know, crisps and uh, sodas and pornography and cigarettes. In many ways, an ideal childhood. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but of course, you know, my, my, my family have also taught me um, that, that with those, you know, I mean, they, they did pretty well out of that. Um, and of course, now they're living with the consequences. Every man over 50 in my family has type 2 diabetes. Um, and but they, they schooled me in a, in a way of thinking about the future that was about transforming the world. Um, but I couldn't do that in Britain. Uh, Britain, as you may know, uh, is a white supremacist society. Um, there's a secret about America, I'll tell you about that later. Um, but but, um, but it was po I, I, I found that it was possible to come to America because uh, of the work of so many movements that, that uh, you know, we have representatives of, of, of them here tonight. I mean, everything from the American Indian movement to the Civil Rights Movement, Black Panthers, Young Lords. Uh, there are a, a, an amazing number of, of movements that, uh, that challenged the white supremacy here in the United States and made it possible for for people like me to come here and do this kind of work. Um, and that possibility didn't exist in Britain, uh, but it does exist, uh, again, I mean, I've, I've talked about poetry a lot today, but, but there, there, is, there is a poetry in America that matters. Uh, and it's, it's a kind of poetry that, that Langston Hughes, uh, in his poem, Let America Be America Again, gets. Um, and you, you must know this poem. Uh, they, they, they must teach it in high school here, <laughs> right? Oh, come on. No, I mean, the idea of let America be America again, let it be the dream it used to be, America was never America to me. That, that line, it, uh, it's, it, it's, uh, for me, it's utterly moving. Um, and it's, it's, it's about the promise and about the hope. Um, and for me, it was possible to do the kind of food justice and food activism work that, that, that I've been privileged to be able to do because of the movements in the past, but also because of movements like Food First that Francis Mollepay set, set up for movements like the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, for movements like La Via Campesina, uh, and by a, a range of movements that, that let me put my privilege in service of, uh, of the movements where I, I could be a researcher and I could be the person who could find things out for the movement and, and put, put myself in service of the movement to, to do what uh, Karl Marx calls committing class suicide. Um, su suicide never felt so good. Um, but I, 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 and I, I guess I'm, I'm, just, I'm just grateful that, that there's the chance and the space to do that uh, in this country. And, and, and then, uh, amazingly, that, that, that I get recognized for it. Um, and I, I'd like to thank, first of all, my teachers, um, Phil McMichael at Cornell, Marion, of course, uh, Michael Pollan, Mark Bittman, uh, Ricardo Salvador, Bryant, uh, Subuzi Kode of the, co of the, the Abatlali Basim John Dolo in South Africa, uh, Zodwan Zibande, Rachel Besner Kerr, Anita Chitaya, and my students, uh, from whom I learn every day, uh, though they would deny it. Um, but, but also, um, you know, I, I, I want to thank my, my you know, fellow awardees. I, I want to thank Susan. Um, and finally, I, I guess I, I want to thank my wife, Minnie, um, because the hard part of all this politics is living it. And um, it's not easy. And Minnie is the, the most amazing partner, uh, an, uh, an amazing woman who's made it possible for me to learn how to live these politics, no matter how imperfectly. Uh, and she knows that, uh, unlike Hugh, on whom she has a ridiculous crush, uh, <laughs> Hugh, Hugh is brave up here and is not phased by you. I am always scared. Uh, but together with Minnie, I always feel stronger. So thank you. Thank you.